this is so funny. Why, hello everybody. It is Robbie from Southern California and Kitty. You were sound asleep. You saw me step out on the deck again with the camera and you thought, oh, my cue. I didn't call you. Anyways, <laughs> yeah, I'll give you something in a minute. It's been two weeks. Oh, I'm going to have to talk above a screaming rooster, a crowing rooster. It's been two weeks since I did the deck and I thought, you know what? Let's step outside and see what's going on. I have done a little, not a whole lot, but let's kind of go down here and I'll tell you what I've done. I've kind of refreshed this a little bit. I've got some things coming up. Not 100% sure of what that is, but I know I've got tomatillos growing in here. Those are tomatillo seeds. These are just left over because I freshened up the soil, but seeds from last year. So those are starting to come up. I put a tomato there. I've got walking onions. And I'm not sure, but it could be more tomatillos all coming through here. I can move them or leave them or let the strongest survive. I've got a zucchini, Black Beauty zucchini. I've got some Swiss chard from last year. But, you know, it's making such a nice comeback since I freshened up the pot a little bit with some compost out of other totes. I might leave it. Walking onions down there. This is a moringa. Look at this. Look at this. Full-size moringa. Well, it's a good-sized tree, and it's flowering, and I just had a bumblebee flying around. It was the funniest thing. He was going up to these plastic flowers to see if it was real. I don't know if that's funny or sad, actually, because that might mean there's not enough food for him if he's checking everything like that out, and he thinks it might smell good. I don't know. This I'm going to leave right now because this is dill. And normally, dill isn't really growing yet. It would be just starting, but this is so nice. So I've left this now it's windy i've left this in the middle this is just to layer but it's already set root because remember anything under pots is going to be damp so i left it with the dill and i've got a few pieces of just some kale i had started in here i'm probably going to change that later and then what else is down here i've got mint and i think this is chocolate mint i think yep chocolate mint more chocolate mint there nothing in there yet look at this swiss chard it looks like it wants to go to seed, but this has been gorgeous. I've actually been using it. Then I've got green sorrel. I've got parsley that has just gone, flat leaf parsley, to starting to go to seed. And then celery. Haven't done anything in there yet. It's just some, look at this black fly. Bush tits come in and eat that stuff. This I haven't done anything with. So I've got some parsley and probably celery in there and just sow thistle. I've been leaving that for the birds and I'll tear that apart later. In here I've got some garlic but we're kind of getting late in the season for garlic so we'll see what happens in here. And I had a few seeds from some squash that I weren't sure if they were any good and they haven't come up. This I haven't done anything with but this is purslane coming up. So Gary said he's going to find a place for it. It just dumped in here a bunch of seeds and look at all of that. But, you know, he likes his purslane. I don't, so he can take that. And again, some more green Swiss chard. And this is really, really old. I mean, look at the size of this. The trunk on it, it's like this big. I'll probably do something later with that. But look at the walking onions. I don't want to disturb anything while the walking onions are setting, you know, babies now. Look at that. These are all the babies that are going to be popping up. So I've got all that. Now, let's swing around over here. Purple basil. Last year's, well, not really, you could say last year's plant because it came up later on in the year, which was kind of an off time to grow, but it grew. So what are you going to do? And that's perfect. So I've got purple basil, red vein sorrel, more walking onions. I just keep sticking the babies around and they keep growing and growing. I love the walking onions because with walking onions, you use the green, you use the bulb if you want. Now, if you only use the green, then your plant will go for years and years. If you use the bulb, that's the end of the plant. And you can eat the babies once they pop open. I don't think I've got any here that have popped open, but they are popping open in the main garden and the bird garden. This is a purple tree collar. As something comes on the deck, could be a squirrel, because Gary caught a squirrel looking on my deck the other day. And they, they do like purple tree collar. They like any collard. And kale and so something was chewing on it so I covered it with tool just kind of stuck some old tool on here and it's worked it kept them off because all the leaves got stripped off and it grew back and then I've got lettuce here but I'll show you something else I did we can look on the other side and we go over there and this is just you know it's an eggplant from last year that never did anything and I'll probably change that up this particular container I've done nothing with and really this one I haven't even freshened it up all I did was add some pots 
here I'm growing garlic in here and two elephant garlic. This is the elephant garlic. See how big the leaves are? Look how big it's getting. And then the rest in there is regular garlic. We'll go on the other side because I kind of left this here. This was for vertical gardening. I grew some Korean melons on it last year. So I figured I'll just leave it. It's sticking in there. Now here's the two different, well, broccoli. And, well, these are both broccoli that were also being attacked by whatever was coming up. And I'm, I am suspecting a squirrel. This works. And I'll have to get into how I made this. This particular cover, I can only get into if I unclip it and take it off. Just clipped on with some clothespins. But I made this out of tote lids. So easy to make. I'm making everything out of tote lids now, it seems like. Pretty soon I'll have clothes and tote lids. No, no, no. But this has worked out wonderful. So this I have to completely unclip, unwrap, and get into if I want to get into the broccoli. But let me tell you, I have kept everything out for almost, almost two weeks now. I made that close to two weeks ago. Now this is another way of using tool, T-U-L-L-E. I'll put the link down below if you want to get some. It's like $10 a bolt, 40 yards. You can't go wrong. It'll last you forever. I just use it everywhere. But this one is different. Now this, I just took a piece of tool and I put three tomato steaks in. Just plain old tomato steaks you would buy. This is short ones. Stuck them in the pot, as you can see here, and just wrap some tool around it. And I can get in here on the top. See, the top is open. So even bees, if I wanted bees to go in there, nothing's bothering it. See, the bees can go in, the top is open. I can reach in and get something out of there take it off if I want because it's just close pinned on it's not even attached permanently but it's kept the critters away because they don't like the feel of it they get their nails in here and they think it's some sort of trap I've got tons of videos on it so if you don't know anything about tool and you're first here for the first time please go check them out because it can be a total lifesaver having tool let me put it this way if I didn't have tool on the garden here in this in the garden or on the deck I would probably have half of what I get because the tool has been a lifesaver. Then I've got my tricolored sage. I cleaned it up by just trimming it way back. I've got a piece now in my pizza garden that's over on in, you know, in my rainbow garden. I took a cutting and it worked. And then I've got some lettuce growing and then again more walking onions. This I believe is a tomatillo. And then this, this is garlic chives, and I think I'm going to put a tomato in there. I had tomato growing last year, and I think I want another tomato. These are onions. Look at this. Cool, cool, cool. Probably tomato plant there. Isn't that cool? So I've got the onions. This one's going to be a big onion. Oh, my gosh. And then they're also, some of them went to seed. So I'm going to let them go to seed and collect the seeds. I'm going to grow my own onions this coming fall. And then I'll be picking the onions as I need them. I know they're a little close. But let me tell you, I've done it here on the deck really close. I pull the ones out in between. If I need a small onion, I let the other ones keep growing and it worked. Last year I had all these onions. It really, really worked. All right, so then I've got mint. I believe that's peppermint. There's a tomato growing in a pot, which is gonna leave the pot and set its roots out down there. See the plant? See, that's the other, bro see the broccoli? That's an old broccoli. Actually, that's a broccolini, and that one's a broccoli, because that one I think I bought a couple years ago. Well, it wouldn't be a couple years ago. Over a year ago, about a year and a half ago, before the lockdowns and everything. And I still have the steak in there. So it didn't really grow good, but it's still alive, because they'll grow for, go for like five years. Look at all the hummingbirds coming in. Is that cool? So anyway, so I'm going to go ahead and leave it here. I was going to put it in the garden, but now that there's tool around it, nothing's bothering it. And then again, this is just garlic. This is garlic in this one. And I haven't done anything here. I've got a tomato here that's coming up. This is more parsley. This is regular curly parsley that's gone to seed. And I am kind of, well, when I say I collect the seeds, I crush it. I have the seeds. I drop the seeds. And then I go move them later when I want. That's the way I grow parsley. Pretty much, I've got a tomato one up. If it didn't cost me anything, I literally crush the seeds into the soil of some of my totes. And then I go back and move them when I want. I wouldn't do that with seeds I'm paying a lot of money for. With seeds I'm paying a lot of money for, then I put them in the plastic bags and I sprout them and then I move them in the cups. These I just sprouted. Let's see, this is a... Okay, this is the Black Beauty squash coming up. I started it in a plastic bag, you know, where I roll it up with paper towel and cardboard. And as soon as it had a root, I put it in here. And then this one is a hummingbird 
plant. It's a hummingbird flower. It's a hummingbird tree, I think they call it. Gary's quite excited. We just got the seeds. And I grabbed a few right away, and I put them in a plastic bag. Two of them rooted, and I put them in here, right, and they just came up right away. I can't believe it. It's only really been... It's been less than a week than we even received the seeds. The other seeds, I don't know if they're going to sprout or not, but we got like 200 seeds, so we'll see what happens. I don't know anything about the plant. It's something that we saw and Gary wanted, and we ordered it, and we got it. These tomatoes are unique to me because the seeds, I think I wrote myself a note. The seed pack I got was packed in 2010, and it was to be sold in 2011. For that year and they're called delicious and I really should have looked them up before I planted that many because it turned out they can be one to seven pound tomatoes and I happen to like the small tomatoes. I threw a whole bunch in one of these containers. This is another setup I do and it's two containers in one. It's a self-watering container so I don't have to take care of it kind of like the tote. I sprinkled them in here. A bunch of them grew and I thought oh wow I didn't expect them all to grow. I've got some even planted out in the yard already. And then I looked them up and it was like, oh no, they're, they're big tomatoes. So we'll see. But at least they're indeterminate, which means once it takes off, it'll just grow and grow and grow. And what do I have here? Oh, I bought some red pear tomatoes, which is right there. I put a few seeds in there. I've got them growing. And this is my cabbage that I better get somewhere planted before I lose them. So that's how I do the seeds. When I buy the seeds or the seeds are special to me. You're not going to see me smashing and throwing seeds out in the tote that I paid a lot of money for. No, no, no. But free seeds, you know, stuff out of my garden, I'll just throw it. That's how I do the parsley and the, the garlic chives and, oh, so many lettuce. I just crush it in there and then I move them where I want later. Tomatoes, of course. These, of course, came from the rainbow garden. I've got those hundred plus tomatoes growing in there. So I stuck a couple of them in here and the bottom's got a great big hole on it actually so it's going to go into that tote and set root in there and hopefully I'll have a bunch of tomatoes on the top and then I've got more tomatoes coming in. This is purslane and I don't have any seeds to show you but these little pods in here when they kind of develop a seed I'm looking to see if I have any seeds when you crush them I don't know if this is a seed no that's not it yeah this is it it was one it's full of seeds. So one little pod is full of like hundreds of little seeds. And then you sprinkle them and that's how you end up with what you saw over here. You end up with this field of this succulent plant that Gary will eat. It's kind of got a tang to it. It's not my thing, you know, but you know, he likes it and he told me he's going to take that. So he can take that. He's the one that bought it. He bought it at the store and he rooted it. And then I got some pieces from it. No, you can't get rid of it. It's like a weed. Do I have seeds here? No, the seeds are all gone. All right, so let's see, let's swing around. Oh, there's my retired ball. It's not retired, I gotta find a place for it. This is my fountain ball. I just threw it there for right now because I have a new fountain. You probably saw that one. We'll see it in a minute. Okay, here I've got poplo. Now this should not have grown. This stayed alive all winter. Kind of small because they really like the warm weather. It still has seeds and they're flying around. And where are they flying? They're flying down here, look. That's all poplo. This is our blue dazzling kale. And then there's the poplo in there. So the seeds kind of flew off and flew down into there as you just see them doing now. And then they came up, So which is really cool because normally they don't really grow yet. They really like really warm weather. So people out in warmer areas can get them to grow, but right now we still have our nights too cool. They don't do that well. Look at this. I know a lot of you said last time, oh, don't take it out. It's beautiful Swiss chart. You know what? A little water, some fre fresh soil. And when I say a little bit of potting soil along with some compost out of another tote, freshened it up and it's good to go. This could be celery in there. Oregano. Yes, I have to pull some of this out. But this is just a field of oregano and this is great when I'm making pizza. Just grab a handful and go for it. Tomatoes, more mint, garlic chives, walking onions, another tomato, and red vein sorrel that really needs to be potted and maybe put around the bathtub next to a pond. I've got so much of it and I don't use that much. I don't need it here, but I had some seeds, sprinkled them in last year and they grew, so they're still there, but that's being moved. Some more mint and that is orange mint. And then here is parsley, 
this looks like dandelion almost. This probably is sow thistle. And then here, that's a cutting off of this kale I really, really like. I've got to keep it covered because the squirrel comes and tries to get that. And the sow thistle is pretty much done. This brings all the goldfinches. And then here is stevia. What was interesting, you probably saw me on the last one two weeks ago, I cut the flowers off. And this I didn't know. As soon as I cut all the flowers off, the plant died back. Any place that had a flower that I cut off, all the leaves died, which was interesting, which means I guess that part of the plant was done. So next time I'm not going to cut the flowers so quickly. See, here's the flowers. I didn't cut these off and it's still alive. So that's probably a sign to the plant that it's done, but it's coming back from the roots. So this is sow thistle, so this we don't want. But it comes back from the roots or seeds get in there, probably a combination of both. See, there's more in the back there. And then it will just make a nice comeback. I don't use a whole lot, but I grab a few leaves with some mint, put it in the blender. You see it all different ways I make it. I make myself a tea. So that's really good. Let's see what else is over here. Sage, I've got that. And then this has been just refreshened up. Look at this. Okay, this is my basil, which is very sad and made it through the winter. So I still get leaves. They're not so big. I've been leaving the flowers for the hummingbirds and for the bees. There's not a whole lot around, so I figured I'll just go ahead and leave it. But I've been taking the seeds. So when I see seeds like this, before the birds get it, and there's not that many seeds. Oops, sorry. There's not that many seeds in there because the birds get it. See, I don't even see any seeds in here. I throw it in there, but look. There's a basil. There's, there's two more basil there. That's a lettuce. But that's a basil. That's a basil. That's a walking onion. And look at this. I should move some of these. Another basil and another basil. So I've got basil. Any more? No, that might be lettuce. Oh, no, there's another basil. See see how they've got the, looks like two leaves kissing. It almost looks like two hearts st stuck together. Isn't that cute? That's what basil looks like. So I've got basil growing there. And then here I haven't done anything with it yet. Still has my pepper. It looks like it's trying to make a comeback. It's got some nice green leaves. So I probably will clean that up. I've got some black fly on that. Black fly tends to come on plants. I can wipe that off with my hand and, or just wash it. They're, they're not such smart insects. It's like an aphids. It's a type of aphids. Um, black fly comes when it doesn't get a lot of sun. And now that the sun has been dropping, it's in the shade, and we have the cool mornings and cool nights, that's when we have black fly. As soon as it starts to get warmer at night and dry more, that's when I've noticed we don't have the black fly. So let's see, what else? Oh, we have this side. Haven't really done too much. This is just celery. I haven't decided what I'm going to do. More parsley. I'm probably going to just leave the parsley. Now the tomato plant came up, so I'm going to leave that. Carrots from last year, and I'm still pulling carrots when I need a little carrot. Look at that. Little tiny carrots. Haven't done anything out my window. And then I've got some garlic chives, some more celery, some more mint, and some more oregano that I planted. Just took some from that other plant and put it in there, and that's it. This is something Gary made for me so I can pop plants in. So it's covered right now because I don't want the sun to beat on it. No big deal and no secret. And there is where the cement ball was on. Changed it over, and I now have a styrofoam ball. The cutest thing. I mean, before I started this, the hummingbirds were all over it, and they were taking baths, and... They just love the ball. Right now they're looking for food. And that this is my little feeding station here on the deck. So the Orioles keep coming in. There has been so many Orioles this year, I can't believe it. Two species. Now normally we have the hooded Orioles. Those are beautiful. They're bright, bright yellow, kind of a deep yellow, almost got an orange tinge to it with the black throat. And then you've got the bullocks. Now normally we get bullocks traveling through, more like they're migrating through. They come through, you see them feed a little bit, and then they're gone. And then later on in the year, end of summer when they're leaving again, then they start to travel through again, but not this year. This year we have just as many, almost, I would say almost just as many bullocks as we have hoodeds. And we've got some in the tree right now. That with the black throat, I don't know if you can see it. That's a hood. If I step back, he might come in. Bullocks is different. Oh, he's in the tree over there now. The bullocks is different. 
and they have a different coloring and they're more orange and they've been coming to the deck and they squabble it's so funny because the box is almost louder he screams and screams but you know all in all they get along they feed together they have bowls so the two bowls that are there are for the Orioles, but then they can also feed out of my hummingbird feeders because I make sure these have holes big enough for them too. So now you got to see the deck, and I think it's coming along pretty good. You know, I still have a lot of work to do. I want to clean up a little bit more around here, and that's going to be basically it. I'm going to add in maybe some more herbs in here, and I'll see as time goes. I do want to put some Korean melons. They do really, really well on the deck because it's nice and hot up here as the weather gets warmer. Korean melons, I've got them started. They're a little yellow melon. They tend to get ripe in the fall because they really, really do. Oh my goodness, do you want to be on camera? What are you trying to tell me? You're like two feet from my face. <laughs> Um, and now I lost track of what I was talking about. I, 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 that was just so funny. He wanted to be on camera. He's like, oh, he's going to say, if Kitty can go on camera, why can't he? Oh, he's back. He's back. He came back for a second. But anyways, what I was saying is Korean melons really like it warm. So they do quite well here. But when it's cool like this, I've got a lot of plants started. They're not really going big. I've got cucumbers and other things going get big. That's what I'll put up here. I'll get some cucumbers up here. So I wanted to do an update, but those are really cool. This has been great. Now, as that broccoli, broccoli, this is broccoli and that one's broccolini. As the broccoli gets bigger, I can just pull that out and I can even make a bigger one or just put a tool around the bottom so nothing wants to crawl up it. They don't want to touch it. And I'll do the same thing. I'll just, actually, I might just leave that tool on permanently just like that and let that plant come back again and get tall. That would be better, it's such a big plant, be better in a big toad on its own or in the garden, but I'm gonna leave it there for now. And that's it, about it. So again, if you're having problems, think about tool because it does work. And hopefully you're gardening, and if you're not gardening yet, I know the weather's warming up, you will be gardening soon. So I think with that, we've covered everything. I wonder if Kitty wants anything. Kitty, you want a broccoli leaf? Kitty, Kitty! I'm not even sure where she is. Let's see, I have to get her Oh yeah, she's here. Let me get her a teeny, teeny, teeny little leaf. Because that's more tender. Here's her. Oh, you are sleeping again. Here you go. All right. And off she goes with her broccoli leaf. It's not broccoli. I got broccoli in my garden. I got a lot of broccoli. I'll bring her in some later. So with that, have a wonderful, wonderful day. And don't forget to eat what you grow. Bye-bye, everybody.